Hello everyone, this is your friendly heavy physics teacher and I have a lesson for my Regents Physics class. This is for Unit 12, Lesson 3.1. I'm breaking up Lesson 3 into two parts. So this is the first part of Lesson 3 and it's going to deal exclusively with the reflection of light. All righty then. At this instant in time, right now, as you are watching this, can you see any evidence of reflection of light? Hmm? I bet you can, but I bet there's a whole bunch you didn't even think of. Because, yeah, as I'm moving my head up and down, I notice that you can see the reflection coming from the light of the computer monitor that I'm using. And when I put my head too low, the angle that my glasses are at don't reflect that glow from the computer monitor. How are you seeing me? How are you seeing the books behind me? How are you seeing my door? Yeah. Everything that you're seeing is somehow a reflection of light. The only thing for right now for you that is a source of light energy is your computer monitor. Or if you're viewing this on your, your phone, your screen on your phone is a source of light energy, okay? So interestingly enough, the only source of light energy, bingo, right there in my room. That is providing all the light energy that's going out into the room and then bouncing, oh, okay, all right. There is... You know, okay, yes, I do have my window over there giving me some light energy, and yes, that can, but you get the idea, okay? So, basically, the bulk of the light is shining off my shiny dome here, as you can see, but it's also providing the light that is bouncing off the books over there. All of that light is eventually finding its way over here to that. The camera and then that's get getting transformed into some form of electromagnetic wave that gets sent to you your computer or whatever device you're using retranslates the the message of that uh, that was carried by those electromagnetic waves and turns it back into an image of the light that was reflected off of me off of my books off of there all around okay so what differentiates that kind of reflection from this kind of reflection? Oh, wow. <laughs> Can you see the infinite going on? I don't think so because of the way there's too much glare coming off of the thing. But notice how. Ooh, making a whole bunch of fingers. All right. What's the difference between this kind of reflection? And notice this is pretty much the same size. This kind of reflection. Well, a lot of it has to do with, quite literally, the surface. Okay. Now we're going to talk about types of reflection, and these are going to be pretty much exclusively surface reflection phenomena. Uh, there is, you can sort of call it another type of reflection, which is what's going on with my shirt here. You've got a surface reflection, which, you know, you can see the shirt, okay? But the fact that you're also seeing the colors represents some of the fact that not all of the energy came off the surface of the shirt. Some of the energy penetrated, was absorbed, and the rest reflected. That's known as a deep reflection or a material reflection. We're not going to deal with that. 
we're just going to deal with what happens to the light that's coming off of the surface of the object. And for that, we have two types of reflection. Okay? We have regular reflection, which is off of a smooth surface. Now, smooth is in quotes because the smoothness of the surface is compared to the wavelength of the light that's count, uh, uh, hitting it, okay? Or could be the wavelength of a wave interacting with the material. Get to what that difference is in a moment, okay? And then we have diffuse reflection. Diffuse reflection means you get scattering, all right? You cannot see an image with a diffuse reflector. You can see an image with a regular reflector. So here we go. We got a piece of paper and we got a mirror. Notice that with the mirror, if I turn it at an angle, oh, look at my uh, stuff over on my desk over there, okay? Yeah, that's, that's where I play my computer games and stuff. Notice my action figures. They're not dolls. My action figures over there, okay? My various paraphernalia and things that I've won throughout the years, okay? Um, yes, that happens to be a medal for throwing shot put, second place. Um, and as you can see, there's an image of the window, right, that I can look out on the world at, my file cabinets, and so regular reflection. I can see an image. The glass is smooth compared to light waves. Okay. Notice that no matter how I turn this, this sheet of paper is not producing an image. And yet, what color is it? It's white. Meaning, is it absorbing any white energy? No, it is not. Is this absorbing any light energy? No, it isn't, okay? Both of these, both of these are reflecting all the light that's getting to them. But this one right here is reflecting light from all over to one location. This one is only reflecting light that's in a direct path, bounced path, yes, but a direct path to the camera, all right? This one is getting light from everywhere and reflecting it to the camera. Diffuse reflection, regular reflection. Okay, the geometry of what's going on. The surface is smooth by comparison to the wavelength of the wave that's coming into it. Now we're talking about light, but this can also be done with sound. For instance, if this were a piece of glass, all right, there are times where when you look at a window, you don't see yourself because you're at an angle. You're not in front of it. You're at an angle, but you're looking in the window and you see a reflection off of something else somewhere else. So let's say that you're standing over here, okay? Over here might be a tree out in the yard. The light from that tree goes in, hits the window, and you can see the image of the tree in the window here when you look at the window. Okay? So a nice smooth surface compared to the wavelength of light, and you see an image. Now, how smooth are we talking? Well, the wavelength of light, the visible light spectrum, is on the order of magnitude of 100 nanometers, one times 10 to the minus seven meters. What's the average distance between atoms in the glass? And if you said something on the order of, oh, something smaller than 10 to the minus nine meters, say maybe 10 to the 10 meters, a thousand times smaller than the wavelength of light, then bingo, you got the reason why light thinks glass is smooth because the distance between the, the particles that make up the surface is way smaller than the wavelength of the light coming in and impacting it 
So the light will bounce off that particular part, okay? Rough surface, all right? This would be a piece of paper to light waves coming in, all right? If we microscopically looked at the surface of a piece of paper, you can easily measure the peaks and valleys that the fibers of the piece of paper make, okay? And so any light coming into it, each individual location is not going to be acting parallel like over here. Each individual location, if you draw the normal line at each of these locations, you're going to get these scattering of these incoming rays off. And so no matter where you stand over here, unless you're in line with something, you're not going to see it. But then again, notice that a light ray coming in from over here on a low angle could bounce off of there and come to your eye. A light ray that is right here could go in and bounce off of two surfaces and come back to somebody standing right here. And that's what's going on with a piece of paper. Okay? Okay, here we have a person who is attempting to view herself in a full length mirror. All right, and the only way she's going to be able to see herself is by looking into the mirror. All right, and of course, the only way she can see is if light reaches her eye from different places on her body. All right, so. How does that work? Well, she is a diffuse reflector. Any light that's hitting her from light sources in the room is going to get reflected over to the mirror. And here's, here's how that's working. Let's say we're just looking at the top of her head, her hair right here, all right? And light's coming in, and so the light hits that point, and because it's a diffuse reflection, some of it bounces off to a friend over here. Some of it bounces back up into the sky. Some of it bounces over here to the wall that the mirror is attached to. And some of it goes over to the mirror. If one of those lines that represents that point on her head goes over to the mirror, it may be at just the right angle to bounce off and come back to her eye. All right, this, you know, she kind of looks a little like Catwoman. All right, so what I'm going to do is draw rays of light, lines that represent rays of light coming off of different parts of her body, bouncing off the mirror and going back to her eye and show you how she sees herself in the mirror. Okay, she's a volleyball player and she's wearing her knee pads, okay? And so a light ray gets diffusely reflected off of her front knee pad here, and it's on its way to the mirror. And only that light ray that can make the right angle between the knee pad, the mirror, and her eye, will she see in the mirror. Okay, and the reflected ray reaches her eye. But does she see her knee pad there in the mirror? Does it appear to be that high off the ground? No, it's somewhere else. And that's because her eyes only see light moving in a straight line. They don't see the fact that it bounced. What she is perceiving is the fact that the light appears to her eye to emanate from this place over here. That's why when light gets refracted, that's why when light gets bent by reflection, all right, our eyes don't see the bend. We perceive it as being a straight line, 
And so when something alters our perception of that, say like when you put a straw in the glass and you see the straw get broken, it creates an optical illusion for us, okay? So I'm gonna draw some more lines from different places on our body and show you how they go to the mirror, get reflected back, and what she's actually seeing based on that. And so there you see it, what we end up with is you could draw a series of light rays from every part of her body. They would all come up at some point, intersect with the mirror, and due to the geometry, would reflect back to that point in her eye. But she sees those light rays as if they appeared over here inside the mirror okay um the the physical nature of that i can talk with you uh, on some time some other time about how that actually manifests in being over here um but suffice to say that what she perceives with her eyes is not the bending and the bouncing of the wave off of the boundary she actually sees that her brain perceives that these light rays came from over here. And that's why when we have a plane mirror, the distance she is from the mirror appears to be the distance that her image is inside the mirror. Okay? And so there you have it. That's how a regular reflection produces an image. That's how you're seeing the image of the monitor, which has is taking a picture of the mirror, which is producing an image of the mirror, which is taking a picture of that image of the mirror, which is produced, blah, and goes on ad infinitum, okay? That's how this is going on. But it's why this can never do that. Because this is scattering from any one point on here. It's scattering the information coming to you or coming from, I should say, the computer monitor to here, and it's scattering it to the room. It's scattering it back to the computer monitor, to the camera, but not enough are going in the correct line off of it in order for that scattered information of what image is being, is coming to it from the world that it can't reproduce that here and we don't see or perceive it as being inside inside this plane of glass okay so the two main types of reflection that we're going to deal with for any type of wave but specifically for light regular reflection you can see an image regular reflection off a smooth surface diffuse reflection Rough surface, how does it rough to? It is rough compared to the wavelength of the wave that's hitting it, okay? Um, so there we have it, reflection of light and how that reflection happens uh, off of one surface depending on what the texture of the surface is compared to the wavelength of light. Thank you for viewing. And uh, we'll see you in the future if you're in my Regents Physics class. Um, uh, the next half of this lesson is on refraction of light. And we're going to be using Snell's Law to predict paths of light as they path in, pass into new mediums. Check this out. Refraction of light right there. Have a great one. Bye-bye now.